Now we come to a very important concept of the energy being stored inside an inductor. Okay. How do I calculate the energy stored in an inductor? Energy stored in an inductor. Okay. So again, uh, let me let me draw. Say what is an inductor? That's that's a rather good question. What is an inductor? Okay, what we have seen anything which has the capacity of linking flux due to current in itself, I am just talking about self inductor, is an inductor. So, any coil becomes an inductor. Okay, rheostat is also an inductor, but what happens? What happens? So, so you will actually see that happening. You, you try to give a current to to a to a coil it will slowly go up and if you if you switch it off it will very slowly come down okay it happens in so many of your power circuits of your sorry electronic circuits in the music system you'll see you have switched off the music system and the led the power led that keeps on glowing it keeps on glowing for at times say for 20 seconds and you won't realize what is happening have you switched it off? Then, then after you have understood that, okay, it, it goes away for after some time. So, so what is happening? Yeah. So, so what is happening? The power is either getting stored into a, into a capacitor, or there is an inductor which is impeding the sudden fall of, the current. Okay. So, what happens? The current, the the inductor, it will not let you suddenly build up a current into it. Why? Due to, due to its inductance. Because that induced EMF will, will impede your progress of how you build the current, right. So, so any coil, any coil, oh, it's very shabby, any coil that, that, that has some, a few number of turns, that, that falls in the category of an inductor. So, so I draw a small this kind of thing, right? This is a coil. So, so, so maybe this is a coil and and where did it go? So fine, I, I say that this is an inductor, okay? This is an inductor and this is how it is being fed through a resistor, why we are using a resistor that you will come to know later. but. This is to actually limit the current in the steady state. If it is a DC and, and say maybe we are using a DC. Okay. So how much energy does an inductor store? Okay. So let the switch be put on so that a current I builds up in the inductor final okay in the 
steady state. <coughs> Ultimately, in the end, we have a, a current capital I that builds up in the inductor. Fine. Now, what happens? Let us try to understand why should there be an why should there be an energy some amount of energy get stored inside an inductor why should that happen see what happens the moment you try to push this current immediately you are opposed by you are opposed by something correct still you have been able to push through your current correct so so to do that to do that you are doing the work <coughs> and what does the work energy theorem tell you if you are doing the work some energy has to get stored inside the system that is the basic basic work energy theorem that we have studied in class 11 whenever you input work whenever the external agency inputs work inputs work inputs work the energy gets stored inside the inside inside the system and what is the system here our inductor now try to understand so so when the current is some arbitrary when the current has attained some arbitrary value I correct the the EMF induced the EMF induced is equal to the EMF induced E is equal to mod of this is equal to L di by dt correct the magnitude is L di by dt okay so it is l di by dt now what has happened i i have pushed in some di amount of current correct so the current changes by an amount di fine fine now, now what happens so so this is my voltage and just at that point of time what is my current i i is my current instantaneous, instantaneous current the power at that instant the power input at that instant is dp a very small amount of power which is equal to l di upon dt which is which is i'll say mod e into i v into i is power that you have been studying in electricity v into i is power no mm -hmm. potential multiplied by current is power so, so dp, that small amount of power at that instant is so much. Why have we taken the mod? Because I'm not interested in that minus thing, no? Because that minus tells me that he's opposing me. Now, if I have taken that, I know that this is the work that I am inputting. So, I do not want that unnecessary negative term. Because I am now quite clear that the work is being inputted by me. Right? So, the power input at that instant by the external source source input this is input okay so what is the energy input input in time dt is okay what is the energy input in that time? In that small fraction of time where my E also does not change and my I also does not change. It is, it is whatever this, this small amount of power is or maybe I will say it is delta P 
or or I'll I'll call it P only, right? Call it P. It's P D T. That is my D W. That is the small amount of work that you have done. D W is equal to P D T, and that becomes I D T. Right. Now, what is that equal to? So D W is equal to L D I upon D T into I into D T. Right. Which is equal to L I D I. Is it not? Now to get the total power, what do we do? Does the total energy inputted when the current builds from when the current builds from I is equal to zero to I is equal to I is given by what W is equal to zero to capital I L I D I which is L I D I zero to I. What is the integral of this? I D I, it is I to the power one, so it becomes I square upon two from zero to I, correct? Now that is equal to L into I square upon two, so so that is half L I square. so if you have set up <coughs> a steady current of i in an inductor whose inductance is l it means the total <coughs> energy that it is storing is half l i square okay that is half l i, I square so so it is equal to so energy stored okay so w is equal to Half L I square. This is what. This is the energy stored in an inductor. Correct. Yes. So, so we understand the point. Also, can we find the work uh, energy stored in two inductors which have mutual inductance? Hmm. Oh. There is another. I don't think it it is inside your syllabus, but there is a way of way of doing it. when there are two inductors then you find actually the total inductance maybe um, there are two cases when when they are supporting when they are opposing and that's how you go but i don't think it it concerns you people right now okay we understand that now if if you do a small thing it becomes very interesting see the total energy is half l i square that i know what is the value of l that is mu not n square pi r square l right hmm no this is this is my l now that is followed by i square okay now that gives me half 
mu naught i i multiplied by mu naught and hence i have to divide it by mu naught there is a reason why i am doing that mu naught square n square i square into pi r square into l what is pi r square l that is the volume is it not and this is this is the volume now energy per unit volume becomes 1 by 2 into b square by mu naught energy stored per unit volume is so much understand now that tells me that the energy actually resides in the in the so so i am saying energy per unit volume energy per unit volume is equal to half b square upon mu naught and there is a wonderful thing it has its counterpart in the capacitor it has its counterpart in the capacitor and there you will find it is 1 by 2 e square into epsilon 1 by epsilon is 1 by mu naught is epsilon naught right that is the count that, that is how we have seen is the correspondence between the electric and the magnetic field and you can very well prove that the energy is stored in a capacitor energy stored per unit volume that comes out to be exactly this enigmatic it's so beautiful so symmetrical that 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 it is it will it will be it will look so wonderful you know so the the energy is getting stored where in the electric field it is not in in the magnetic field it is not inside the inside the inductor it is in the <coughs> magnetic field and anywhere when you talk about that for any system any arrangement the energy stored per unit volume is always that okay it is always this the this is called energy density this is called energy density okay on the same lines as you call density as mass mass upon volume as mass density right so so this is energy density because this is energy energy per unit volume hmm?